This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Embarrassed, McKenzie promises $50 million to fix a SAV market. Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Desmond McKenzie has pledged to set aside $50 million for the rehabilitation of the Savannah Lamar market in Westmoreland. During a tour of the facility on Thursday to announce an extended curfew for market vendors, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. respectively on Christmas and New Year's Eve, McKenzie expressed his embarrassment and disappointment in the Westmoreland Municipal Corporation for its failure to maintain the local market. He had earlier attended the WMC's monthly meeting. I have to admit how embarrassed I am. It's my first visit here to the South Market and I have gotten messages from the vendors about how they have been suffering where it concerns the condition of the market. But seeing it for myself, I could never support any initiative to force people to go into the market because the market is not suitable, Mackenzie said. Vendors have complained that the WMC has been insisting that they sell inside the market, though there is no security, no proper lighting, roofing or flooring. Those who spoke with the news on Thursday opted not to provide their names. They said they were afraid of plying their wares from inside the facility, especially with recent boots of robberies due to inadequate security. One vendor said she had been robbed repeatedly in November. A five time them robbed me last month, I'm afraid. Sometimes all three o'clock in the morning, me have to come in, I'm afraid. Nobody now do nothing for help we, she bemoaned. After hearing similar cries from distraught and angry market vendors, Mackenzie intervened. The vendors raised their three main concerns, the roofing, the flooring, and the question of security. I am going to be setting aside $50 million to commence emergency repairs to the market, and it will be done in three phases. The first phase is going to be the roof, the second phase the flooring, and then we will look at the security, he said. As the minister with responsibility, I want to apologize to the vendors and to the people who come here to buy. But I must say that the municipality has not done enough on the matter, so I am going to commit those funds, and I hope that we can commence work on the first phase by early January, he added. Saint and at a murder limit Already at the 50 murder limit set for itself this year, the St. Anne Police Division is determined to do what is best to prevent another killing. Based on then-Commander Dwight Powell's intent, we don't plan to surpass 50 murders in the parish for the year. We are already at 50 and so there is not much room to maneuver, said Inspector Cordell Jackson during Thursday's meeting of the St. Anne Municipal Corporation. Therefore, we know it will take extra effort but I believe our team is motivated and we intend to do as best as we can. One life that is lost through criminal intent is a lot and so all of us as a decent law-abiding citizens need to ensure we do what is necessary to support the police. Murders are now 14 less than the 64 committed for the same period in the parish in 2020. Jackson told the meeting of plans to introduce new tactics and to pull additional resources to combat the potential criminal activity, especially in the towns. We know that Ocheria St. Anne's Bay and Brownstone are likely to see heightened activities. These towns are usually crowded due to the influx of additional vendors, and that will create congestion, and with that comes unsocial behavior, he said. We have covert operations, and we have a system in place to reduce these happenings, as our duty is to ensure that the citizens of St. Anne can feel safe and have a wonderful Christmas holidays, and thereon, he added. He said they would be relying on the Jamaica Ice system and ask that areas near cameras be cleared of excess shrubbery that is hampering their efficient operation. Officers are already being placed at strategic points, and we know that the demand of policing will necessitate long hours. We will be making it our duty to protect the parish Jackson vowed. Beach Stout co accused the one's earlier court date to attend mom's funeral. Justice Vinette Grime Allen on Thursday denied a request for a closer mention date 
to afford a murder accused an opportunity to attend his mother's funeral. Defense attorney Ernest Davis had made the plea on behalf of Oscar Barnes, who is jointly charged with a 67-year-old Everton Beach Stout MacDonald for the July 20, 2020 murder of the latter's second wife, Tonya Hamilton MacDonald. Barnes's mother reportedly died three weeks ago, and arrangements are being made for her funeral later this month. That will not happen, Graham Allen replied after the attorney's plea. Barnes had been granted bail in the sum of $500,000 in May 2021, pending approval from investigators of his new place of abode. The court had ruled on September 23, 2021, that the police were to make checks by November 30 and to make a determination on the residence after they had shot down two previous options suggested by his defense. Davis told the court that three emails were sent to the superintendent in charge of major investigation division and he did not get a response by the deadline ordered by the court. He said that he was informed a day later on December 1 that no one had contacted the police. Graham Allen adjourned the matter and summoned the police to appear in court to explain why the order was not carried out. On Thursday, the investigating officer appeared after the break and told the court that his superintendent was not in possession of the location of the potential residence until December 2. Graham Allen then made a court order for Davis to give the investigating officer a note in her presence with the information so checks can be made to verify the location. The investigating officer had been ordered by the court to complete checks by December 17. The court was not told the date of the funeral. However, the matter relating to Barnes's residency will again be mentioned on December 20. Before you set the next court date, my lady, I am asking you to set a court date wherein you could facilitate Mr. Barnes attending his mother's funeral. Davis encouraged Graham Allen. Look here, that will not happen because the court has no available date other than the one I am going to give. Okay, understand, she replied. I am not sure I understand, Davis responded as the courtroom erupted into laughter. Both accused were appearing before the court remotely on Thursday. MacDonald will be represented by Earl Hamilton in relation to the death of his second wife, Tonya Hamilton MacDonald. However, he has until next appearance on February 3 to settle representation in the murder of his first wife, Merlin Petal MacDonald, who was killed on May 2, 2009. Meanwhile, the court heard that documents are outstanding in the Tonya Hamilton MacDonald murder case, whereas the Crown is ready to proceed with the Merlin MacDonald case. MacDonald was previously represented by Bert Samuels and Matthew Hyatt with regards to the bail application, which had been denied. Both accused were further remanded, Barnes until December 20, 2021, and the MacDonald until February 3, 2022. Police link theft of animals to criminal activities. The police say they have detected a trend in which gangsters are stealing animals to support their criminal activities. Head of the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Pretty Larsny Unit, Superintendent Oral Pasco, says criminals are using the proceeds from selling stolen animals to purchase firearms to engage in turf war. According to Superintendent Pasco, there is a distinct link between Pradia Larsny and the serious crimes. Someone can steal 50 animals from one person, and that's approximately $5 million in value. This is a normal occurrence right across the island. They then take the proceeds of this money and they buy guns directly to support their lifestyle. Another aspect that is critical is the Haiti meat for guns trade, and they bring it through our unoccupied ports. These gangsters used these same weapons to perpetrate more crimes, Pasco said. COVID-19 hospitalizations on the decline in St. Thomas COVID-19 hospitalizations and active cases continue to decline in St. Thomas. Medical Officer of Health for the parish, Dr. D.O.N. Smith, says there are 14 active cases of which 8 are in isolation at home. Six persons infected with the virus are hospitalized. Dr. Smith says health authorities will continue the education drive. Dr. Smith says health authorities will continue the education drive 
to combat the vaccine hesitancy in various communities in St. Thomas. Teams will target Rowlands Field, Golden Valley, Whitehall, Bamboo River, Church Corner and Albion. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.